Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a bobby spinner. This is a really, really old fly. I don't, I don't, I have no idea how old it is. And I don't mean like 1990. I mean like 1930 or something. It's a, <clears throat> it's an adaptation of an old Michigan hex patterns. And the, when the Robert Shella Drake came out, I think that was in the 40, 41, something like that. Um, Ray Schmidt has a tutorial on that and on tying it. it uh, actually, uh, the fly was his uncle's. And he, if you're a history buff, you can look that up. But uh, the, the Robert Jello Drake is such a phenomenal fly. It, it's one of my favorite flies of all time. It virtually has never been changed. But I wanted a spinner pattern off of that. And we always did our hexes like that. And so we took the fly and we just, the, the Robert Shello Drake took the, the best components of it and turned it into a spinner, Use, you know, run that fly. And then, and we, we always had, like I said, for the giant hex flies, but we didn't, nobody ever really did it as a, a little one. So we call this one the Bobby Spinner off the Robert Shello Drake. It's, it's super simple. It, it's, it's got all that componentry that we use in most of the, the Midwest uh, hex flies, uh, but it's going to be scaled down. And so I like ring eyes on my, on my spinners. This is going to be on a, this particular, whatever ring eye hook you like. The TMCs, they make, you know, the, the 100s and 101s in that style of, you know, the ring eye style. Uh, this is a, a 1110 Daiichi. I'm going to do it in a 14 so we can see it. Uh, the thread that we're going to use, I'm going to use, and this again, you can use whatever color you want. And I do that on a lot of them. I, I, most of everything I tie is on a natural deer hair, right? And so I, I generally use either this olive or the brown tenna power silk. Uh, it's just a toner is all that is. It's when it goes up and down the body, just a figure eight. And like on my hex flies, I used yellow. And, and it's just whatever you want to use for contrast to that body. I'm going to use the brown because it kind of matches the, uh, the Cree hackle I'm going to use. Hey, what was that? Bodkin went flying. <laughs> so this is brown. Uh, this is Roman Mauser Power Silk. I'm going to use Micro Bard Thibets. These are MFC's pot, uh, tails. I never use this stuff on this fly. I always use regular hackle. But I really, I really, you'll see these things when I pull them out of here. I, I really just, I'm really liking these bars. I, I just, I, I really think that's a cool effect on this fly. It's super durable. You can't wreck these tails. And it's just, it's just a cool look for it. In the body, which I will describe a little bit later, uh, what I'm looking for, and it, we're going to use short fine deer here. This is a little bit longer than short fine. And so, and I'll explain that in a second, but it's just, we're, that's going to be the body. Our wings are going to be either Zelon, any Antron you want. This happens to be EP fiber. That's fine. If you like poly, that's fine. Just... I like the shinier stuff personally. I just like a little reflection to that. My thorax is going to be super fine. Uh, brown olive, super fine. I use this. I, I, that's, I use that color so much. It's, uh, and I use it in virtually all my spinners. And then I'm going to have three turns of hackle, which is just going to be, I'm just going to have a uh, Cree or a dark barred ginger. Dark barred and ginger is much easier to get than Cree, obviously. But uh, I just like that look. If you want to use brown or gray or done, I don't, it doesn't. It, you're gonna have you're gonna have virtually none of it. <laughs> There's not much on there, so uh, it won't matter. I just I think that's a, a cool looking color. So with this GSP, when you start your thread, it's not a bad idea to just hit it with a little wax, and it'll it'll just stop it from slipping. I'm gonna work the two thirds one third equation on this. One third of it is thorax, two thirds of its abdomen. Uh, we're going to cheat that just slightly on your hook, just a little bit more than a, uh, a third for your thorax, because when you see when we build this, the tip hair is going to stick back further. And so it's really going to make your fly bigger than the hook. And so we're going to work this back in here. I, I'm just going to leave myself a little bit more room. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second, that when that, when that hair is sticking back past the hook, it's going to elongate your fly. So if you're looking for a true size uh, 14, you, you might have to tie this just uh, reduce or, or put it on 16 hook because the fly is going to be longer because of the tip hair. 
All right, I'm going to take four or five of these things. These are super fine. They're super skinny little barred bibets. All right, and you can't really see these things. I know I'm going to put my hand up here so you can see it. But we always talk about using our, our hook for a gauge, you know, something that tells you. And, and that's just much, there's a functional reason you do that when you put the, use your hook for a gauge. And there's, all, there's an aesthetic value to it, you know, so it tells you that you don't have too short or too long, your consistency, your fly. And so your, your flies, when you open up the box and you look and you've got 20 flies, everyone has the exact same link tail. So that tells you, you know, you, you practice your craft, you know how to do what you're doing. It's not some random act of craziness. You put the things down and, and because the one that you work with will have the right length tail. If you tie these things different lengths, you look down in your box and I guarantee you at the end of the year, there'll be eight of them sitting there and something will be wrong with them because they don't look like you wanted them to. So get it right right now. So on this particular one, I always say use the length of the hook is the tail. You know, that's going to be your overall body length should be the length of your tail. But because we're going to add a little bit of that tip hair sticking out, leave a little bit longer tail on this one. It won't hurt the fly if it's, if it's too long. And hell, these are micro beds. You could cut them if you wanted to. But you shouldn't do that. Just leave it about an eighth to a three sixteenths longer than you would normally. Come in here, give it a pinch wrap, set it right, set, anchor, look it over. All right, I'm looking at the tail. Can you see that, Jeremy? Is there, is there enough contrast? All right, so look it over. Make sure it's a little bit longer than you would normally. Now we're just going to progress forward right over top of that. And we're going to leave a, a good third right there. Now, now we're into this deer hair thing. And this is... And selecting this, like I said, it's, it's short, fine, it's what you're going to want. What you won't be able to use on this fly is primo strip or any of your spinning hair, any of your just normal length body hair. You know, short, fine, this is a pretty short and pretty fine hair right here. This is kind of just on the outside of it, just, just on the edge of it. It's just a little longer, but like, like with anything on hair, I'm looking for this clean break right here. I want that dark line, and I don't want it to have too much tip sticking back because the, everything above that dark line isn't hollow. And so I want as much hollow hair as I can get. But the key to this, as you can see, it's, it's really fine hair. It's thin. It's skinny. And so I'm going to get a nice, clean body out of it. I don't need a lot of this. I'm going to clean out some of it. And this is, this is why this fly is so floaty. It's it just... It just floats forever. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to clean out this hair. I'm going to open it up and get some of that out of there. I'm going to take that micro stacker. This is the J Nick, which uh, we renamed as the Swingers. The, the This is the little one, the smallest one. And I really think this is important on small flies. I don't think stackers are that big of a deal on your bigger stuff. But when you get into this, this fine hair, it's so easy to see and look. And none of it, there's not a big gap here, so it's just enough when it goes down. I can see it. I get control of it. Pull that out of the stacker. And the first thing I do right now is, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a few hairs that are not tip hair. And I just go in and just grab them, get them out of there. And pull that, because it'll just make, it'll just not, won't look good when you're done. And so I just pull those out of there. Then I take it and I spin it. And I clean it a little bit, just looking. And if I think I pulled some of those hairs when I was getting rid of the ones, just go right back into your stacker and get it right. Get it off of there. There you go. So there's still one hair in there I didn't like. This, uh, he's a rogue. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to switch this. And you should get used to switching your hair. You should be able to go from one hand to the other without manipulating, without sliding your hair. So I get a hold of it. I don't let it slide, and I don't have these tips changing length. If you think you did, put it back in the, st in the stacker. Just make it right. So I'm, I'm going in here, and I'm going to measure. And this is what I was talking about. I want these tip hairs right here to be just a little longer than the bend of the hook. And that's why I told you you had to have your tails a little longer, because they're going to stick out past the bend. So unlike a dubbed body, which is going to end right here, now this one's going to stick back about 
uh, you know, an eighth of an inch. And so, but, but it's also what makes this such a great floating ply. Those tips catch in the water as they go down. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to measure it, I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to make, I want that right there, I'm going to make a nice, clean cut. Now we're going to tighten this up, get it about an inch and a half or so, and spin your thread to the right. What that'll do is it'll lay the thread back. It'll lay back, you won't fight it in your hand. So we're going to come in here, we're going to let the hair just move a little bit around, just barely around the hook. Put one, and I'm just pulling a little bit tight. Two, and you can see I got this all the way wrapped around the hook. Now I'm just going to go nice. You don't don't let go with your left hand, and don't pull this tight. Just they're just even pressure. I'm going back, nice figure eights. Get right to here, back to the bend of the hook, and I give it a little bit of a tug, and that's going to. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try my hand in there so you can see it. You can see the tip sticking back. You can see the tails and the tip. Let it flare just slightly and then just nice even wraps. You see I'm not crushing the hair. That, that hair is the air trap. That, that air trap is what makes this fly float forever. And so if you just reef on that thing and squish it all down, you'll suck all the air out of that thing and you won't have that pretty little body sitting there. So I got, you can see that there's the tail. I'm a little long on that actually. Don't do that. Make it a little bit shorter than that. My bad. Okay, now we're going to need a hackle. I'm going to take this, this uh, go one size bigger than your gate, your hackle gauge tells you. And I'm, I'm right now I'm just looking for a nice brownie. I like the colors of these things. You, know, I'm, you can use, like, you can use whatever color you want. It just, I just like this Cree. Stop that. Don't bend your hook with your arm. So I'm going to tie this in and I want it to be, you know, one size bigger, you could go to it, wouldn't hurt anything, but it'll look funny to you. Uh, and it won't really change it. The, they've, got, they've got six legs, right? This is kind of, you wouldn't really even need this if you didn't want it, but it just it dresses it up. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to go from right side of my thread and hook it with the base of the, the hackle underneath the hook. Boom. Right there. Go under and back over to in front of it. Don't hook that stem. You see I hooked that stem right there? And squeeze it nice and tight. I hooked that and did it twice. There. Okay. He's nice and set. Now I'm going to take this. And the reason I... I let, me, let me back up here for a second. Give me you. If you wanted to, if you don't want to fight that, if you don't want to have that hackle there and you don't want it in right now, if you want to set your wings first, you can. It, it's, if it's totally up to you. I like to have the hackle in there just because once I get roll, it just, I'm just used to doing it that way. Put him back in. So if you wanted to right now, it wouldn't be a problem if you did not turn this, if you didn't put it in. You could put it in after your wing sets. There's our figure eight. Cinch it down. Now we should be in the middle of this hook right now. Now I'm going to take no real way to tell you. you. You can trim this, but you can't add it once it's there. So I'm going to have just, and I'm going to double this up. I, you can do it. You can do a single set right now if you want to. I'm just kind of used to doing it the way I do it. And I like, and what I, when I do this, I put in two pieces or one piece and I fold them over and it just for me, it, it gave me a, a nice look to the wing. You'll see when I set it. But if you wanted to do a single set right now, you could. So I'm going to come in here and I fold it over my hook. I kind of hooked that. And I come in and I set it right on the edge and give it two turns. See how that's flared out? Give him a... I didn't get that set very well. I take this one, I fold it over my thread, come right on the other side. Just like that, boom. Johnny told me I say boom too much. Don't argue with Johnny. Okay, it's a little crazy right now. If you wanted to do the single set, it isn't going to hurt anything. But you're going to see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have. You can see they're xed out. They're not going to. They're not going to be like that in a second. As soon as we put all our dubbing on here and get this. This hackle going through everything will be fine. 
olives. I'm going to take the brown olives, super fine. Life's going crazy on this guy right now. Look at him. And we're going to just come in here, and, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm re-emphasizing. If you wanted to do a single wing on this, just put one across and figure eight, it, it would be just fine. And, and, and it wouldn't hurt anything. This is just the way I kind of do mine. I don't use a ton of these flies. They, you just, you know, one or two a night and during the spinner fall, and I'm just fine with coming back and tying an extra two or three of them and being a little slower on the, on the fly. It's, I just don't use that many of them. It's not, and it's evening, I'm usually a little heavier tip, but I'm not losing that many of them. So I'm gonna do a figure eight. I'm gonna come through here. I'm gonna do one turn, not a figure eight, through the middle of this two turns just so I can see that. And then I just come around and I build my, I go behind the wings, behind the hackle, and I'm starting to build and I'm tightening. And what you're seeing is it's, as I do that, I'm gonna tighten that V up. So it's, <clears throat> it's reducing that, that, that V effect. It starts out pretty broad, but first thing I'm looking for, like I, I just harp on this, I want, I want a thicker, at, or thorax in my abdomen. I want it one third thicker than the abdomen, and I'd like it to be just slightly darker. And so I've got the fly pointing at my the belly, and, and it's kind of a good point. The fish never sees the top of your fly. And so you'll see us sit here and tie and tie and tie people all the time. They never look at the bottom of the damn fly. Well, that's what the fish sees. So <laughs> you should be looking at it from down here. And so I build my taper, I, I look underneath, and I just make sure, obviously you don't have to sit here and do the whole thing, but I'm just looking to make sure that I've got a, a clean, I've got a clean um, thorax, it's nice and thick. I like one more turn through this thing. I, I try to get one turn through there. I want it to stay split just a little bit. And then I'm gonna build this up and push that wing. Now I'm gonna tighten that wing up just a little bit back to the front. Try not to catch too many of those fibers forward. I got a few crazy ones out the front. We'll get those in a second. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to do three turns of hackle. And I'm going to have one behind the wing, one through it, and one in front of it. We're going to end up trimming almost all this off, right? And so before we do that though, I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut a little bit of shape to this wing. I've got this and, I, and I, I harp about this a lot. And I like to have the shortest fibers in the back. You don't have to get it all done right now. It's a little easier if you do some of this right now. You're just gonna get a little bit of, little bit of shape, a little less of that stuff. Now, I'm, I'm really rough right now, but if you look, you can see I'm starting to develop a shape to the wing. I want the shorter ones at the bottom, longer ones out to the side, could you see that pretty good? No, no problem. All right, so now I'm gonna do one turn hackle right behind the wing. Now we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna go split that, go one right between them. I got a little bit tight right there. And then this one's gonna be really tight right in front. You don't need that hackle. I just, I, I think it comes from the day way back when, when we, on a, on a, on a fly this size, you wouldn't need it. But like I said, I, I, this comes off of a fly from the hex flies from back in a bajillion years ago, and they're gigantic. If you've never seen a hex, a hex mayfly, it, it, it can be two inches long. They're, they're the biggest mayflies there are. Okay, now, he's a little bit crazy. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna trim all the junk that's, that's in the way. And then the next thing you do is you come in and you cut all the hackle off the bottom. This thing doesn't sit up on the hackle, it's, it's suspended by the body and the wings. And so now we're just gonna come in and just finalize that, the trim. We're gonna come in and I'm just shaping this wing. <clears throat> Don't worry about cutting your hackle. It's, it, you're supposed to have six legs. You're not, this isn't supposed to be a real big 
fluffy hackle fly. They're, they're in there, like I said, if you didn't want to put them in, you wouldn't have to. And you can see I'm just, I'm continuing to develop this, this shape to this wing. I don't want it too big, I don't want it too small, but what you're going to see is I'm going to have the shortest fibers, making sure they're kind of close to the same length. And what that hackle does is it really kind of, aside from giving maybe a little bit of leg, it, it stabilizes that wing. There's stuff holding that wing from collapsing because there's a whole bunch of little fibers, right? And so what you'll see here is when I'm done messing with this, which is I'm really just overdoing this. I always say that if this was a working fly, it'd be way done. But if it was a working fly, you wouldn't be sitting there in that macro going, hey, Gallup, that fly's wing's half an inch too long or whatever. And so I would feed my haters. All right, that's enough of that. So now what we've got, if you look at this fly, there's a lot of trims hanging all over. I'll get everything so you can see it. Get him up there. I don't know if you can see that or not. So most important part of this fly is from the bottom. So you just can't help but start messing with these things once you know people are going to look at them. All right. Just a little bit of cleanup. So you're not going to see, I mean, from the top, you're going to see it pretty well too. But you can't see the tails. I'll get something so you can see behind there. So the tails are back here. You can see they're past the tips of these, the, the tail. They're back here, very accurate, very stable. The body's nice and thick. It's got a nice, big, thick body. And so it's not all, none of that's going to get trapped. There's a few hackles that are kind of disturbing that. So, but from the bottom, this is what, this is what, you're gonna, what the trout's going to see. And so what you're going to see is you've got that nice, clean body, and you've got that shaped wing. It's got that beautifully shaped wing. It's going to hold its structure because you got the hackle through it. You set the thing in a V. Again, if you wanted to do that with just a single set, just use a little bit more than I did on the, on, the, on the doubles, put a little bit more in there and just shape it, wrap your hackle around it and you'll be just fine. So you can see nice and short on the bottom right here, that's gonna stabilize because the shorter that, hack, that wing is, the stiffer that hack, the material is gonna be. Hackle's gonna help it a little bit. You got a beautiful shape to your wing you got a body and a tail. That's what they're looking at. They're looking at that spent fly in the water. And this thing will float forever. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you out.